Well, hello everybody again. Welcome back to the channel. Today, guess where I am? I'm in Tenerife, obviously. The best place in the world. Well, it's my favourite place in the world to be. So it's early December 2021. And the first thing I'm going to do today is take you on one of probably the best drives in the world as well. So this is going to be a good video. The best drive on the best island in the best place in the world, in my view. So I'm going to take you on arguably what is one of the best drives in the world, in my view. Well, certainly one of the best drives here in the islands. I'm going to take you from a fairly low level, we're about 200 feet above sea level, so I literally have just picked up the hire car, and we're going to climb all the way up to Mount Tady, which is about 11,000 feet above sea level, and then you can take the cable car right up to the top. And if you haven't seen the videos of Pico del Tady, the peak of Tady, which is where I climbed some months ago, then I strongly recommend you see that as well. They're right here on the channel. And that video, I went all the way up to the peak. You get about 200 permits per month from the Canarian government. And fortunately, I was able to get one. So I climbed rather unhealthily right to the top. And it was a really great day out. So I highly recommend that video. I'll pop a link above. But for the time being, come on this road trip with me. We'll stop. We'll have a chat. And I'll show you why I love Tenerife so much. So here's the map of where we're going. So this is where we are here about five minutes from the Tenerife South Airport. And look at all these bendy roads. I mean, this is what it's like all the way up to Tady. And there's some really great sights once we get into the National Park as well. So rather than just show you the map, let's get on the road. So welcome to Villa Flor, the highest village in Tenerife, sitting 1,500 metres above sea level. It's absolutely stunning. And I'm feeling quite hungry now, so I'm going to try and find somewhere to eat and show you around this really stunning village. This really is a rather stunning village. I've never been here before. I've probably driven through and never noticed it. And a friend of mine who lives here said, next time you're here, you must try Villa Flor and see what you think. It's a nice little place. And it is. It just looks immaculately kept. And other than this uh, derelict building here, but you... That'll actually be really nice when it gets refurbished, eventually. Manana time, of course. <laughs> but it's just... The village of the village of Villa Flor is just surrounded by these green, luscious trees and mountains. Yeah, so what I'm going to do tonight, if I get time, is uh, I'll drive back and I'll try and stop off here to get it all lit up because I can see they've put the Christmas lights up. So the temperature's definitely dropped and I expected it to because we've climbed up to 1500 metres now above sea level. And the wind is actually quite calm but it's definitely, the wind's definitely picked up. The wind's quite calm, but it's definitely, temperature-wise, it's definitely chilled down a little bit. And there you go. There's even a hotel here, at least one, possibly another. So this is already giving me an idea for a future video, ladies and gents. I may well just come back and stay here. What a nice place. I should say, of course, that Tenerife and the whole of the Canary Islands are just like this. So wherever you go on the islands, there's always somewhere that's, there's always a village type place that you can stop off at. And they always have restaurants and bars and, you know, the way I talk about Villa Flor, I am impressed. It's a very nice, small village, but it's not the only village. <laughs> it's not the only village by any stretch of the imagination. And we'll see some more villages as we go on our drives together further up 
to Mount Tady. And I'm really looking forward to it. Well, I just love being in Tenerife, don't I? You've got behind you, up in these mountains, lots of lush greenery, and you get that the higher you go. Not just in the north of the island, you don't need to go to the north of Tenerife to get the greenery. There's plenty of it down here, plenty of it down here. You just have to climb a bit. And it's picture postcard today. Let me show you. So we're just getting through, we're just getting through the clouds there. A little bit of sunshine, but it is overcast here. I expected it to be. It generally, it generally is in my experience. When you get higher up, there's usually a concentration of clouds no matter what time of the year you come here. But that picture postcard, and I'll try and zoom in for you, ladies and gents, because it is just amazing. The sun's just breaking through onto the mountains there, onto the hillside. So I'll share a secret with you. I am here and I'm going to show you my very favourite spot in the whole of Tenerife. Now it's December as I said earlier so it's fairly quiet right now and it's actually just me and one other car here which is really nice because in the height of summer this is just rammed with coach parties, with tourists, with well basically everybody. <laughs> and so up there is Mount Tady and I will zoom in as much as I can and what you're seeing up there the white bits is actually snow and the temperature has dropped it's about 12 degrees here as I'm talking to you but uh, what you can see up there is is as I say snow and you might just be able to make out sort of there if I point to it just there that's where the cable car is and on my previous video which is on the channel I got the Canarian government permit to go right up to the top at the peak. And as I said earlier, you need to allow a good few months to get hold of the permits. They only issue 200 a day. So you take the cable car up to the cable car, the top, the top of the cable car. And you can, might just be able to see the, uh, the sort of brown smudge there, which is the top of the cable car. And then from there, it's about a 40 minute walk to the top but it's well worth doing. It's not a particularly great path, so you need to be relatively fit. And as you'll see on the video, it was quite tough. And so before you do the climb, which is just over my right shoulder here, I've got the sun directly in my face, so I can't really see the screen, but I think it's up. It, it is definitely up there. <laughs> Mount Tady hasn't moved since the last time I was here. But before you do that climb, I strongly urge you to look at the video that I did when I did the climb up to the top, because it is quite tough. It's, I'm not the fittest person in the world, but nor am I the most obese person in the world. And I found it tough. So do have a look at that video. If you're thinking of doing it, if you're not sure, then I'll pop a link to it. Have a look, see if it's for you. Uh, the one thing that you will get is lots and lots of wind. And 
you will be exposed to the sunshine because there is literally, as you can see, nothing protecting you. If you went up there today, you would probably get sunburned and it's December. But that's not the only reason why this is my favorite spot in Tenerife. The main reason is just this. I mean, just look at this scenery on a clear day like today. It is just fabulous. And I actually thought we weren't gonna to get to see much because on the drive up here, that like we saw earlier, the clouds were really thick and really starting to come in. But it's really turned out to be a really great afternoon. It's 2 p.m. It's not far from Christmas. And there's nowhere else that I'd rather be right now. So once you've left the village of Villaflor, that's when you're into the National Park. And it is stunning here. It really is. So the park, like many parks around the world, like many national treasures, has its own population of rangers. The only reason I'm telling you this is because you're not allowed to fly drones here. And there is a 5,000 euro fine, up to 5,000 euro fine, if you get caught flying drones here. But frankly, I've never been here when it hasn't been so windy that you wouldn't want to fly a drone here because you'd probably lose the thing. So there you go. Handy tip for you. And look at that perfectly straight road. Some people might take higher cars and see how fast they could get down that straight road. Not me, of course, not me, never. It's a strange thing being stood here in December because I can feel the heat on my back, but it's also quite cold. The wind is quite cold and hopefully you can hear me over this wind, but it's the strangest place for that. And I love coming here around Christmas time because it's a little bit quieter. I mean, the Canary Islands, they are, of course, a year-round destination because, as I said, you get the year-round sunshine and it's, as we saw on the drive up here, still very popular with the cyclists and the motorcyclists. And I can see why. I can see the appeal. Although I don't own a motorcycle myself. And I never have. But it's just, it's just one of those places that, well, I just love being here. I really do. I'm so happy being here. Let me show you these all sorts of these uh, these little bikes, sort of quad bike type trips. You see those quite a lot. I must do one of those one day. They look like absolutely great fun to try. Uh, so you know how I said that you're not allowed to fly drones here. <laughs> well, that's not mine. I have got my drone with me, but that's for a separate video while I'm here on the island. But if the ranger catches them, he'll be marching them off to ranger headquarters for a fine. And the rangers do just suddenly appear from everywhere. Anyway, uh, 6,671 feet to be precise. And up there, up at the top of Mount Tidy, is... Well, you'd have to watch the video, actually, because I can't actually remember what the altitude is. But if you have a look on the video, when I went to the top of Tidy, I think it was about 12,000 feet. We will motor on. We will motor on. So what you see behind me, this fabulous, enormous cavern, is what's known as a Catedral Calderas, which was formed about 170,000 years ago. And it is stunning. It really is. So La Catedral Calderas is one of the most popular attractions on the drive up to Mount Tady and it's best to come and see it really at this time of the year in December because, or December January time because in the height of summer you struggle to get parked and there is plenty of parking around here. Uh, the authorities have hundreds of parking spaces around here but it is such a draw for the tourists for volcanologists, 
Is that right? Volcanologist? Or is that a study of Star Trek? I'm not sure, but you get my point. But sunny days today, fabulous. It really puts a smile on your face, doesn't it? It really does. I was just reading on some of the tourist literature and it's really interesting to understand how these things are caused. And of course, primarily it's volcanic. And what the authorities are saying is that volcanic activity has now ceased here in the Canary Islands. Well, of course, that was the case, I guess, until about six months ago when we saw the volcanic eruption on La Palma. And I was there about three weeks before it erupted. And you can see the video of that because that's where I tried out Binta Canarius, the airline, as well as Canary Fly, both excellent airlines, by the way, if you're into island hopping here in the Canaries. But clearly from the literature that the local authorities produce, they never expected, or certainly they never published, that any of the Canarian volcanoes were anything other than dormant. The experts just didn't expect this to happen, as awful as it is, but fascinating at the same time. And so if you do get a chance to come and see La Catedral Caladera, while you're on the drive from the south of the island up to Mount Tady, which we'll see shortly, it is well worth coming here, assuming you can get your car parked. But they do put a lot of parking around here, and it really is a fascinating place to visit. But this remarkable scenery, truly, truly remarkable. It would be criminal to come to the Canary Islands and not visit this place, ladies and gents. It's fascinating. Well, here we are at the base station, folks, for the Mount Tady cable car. The base station home shed where they park the uh, pods is closed, unfortunately, because of the wind and perhaps in a testament to how good road microphones are, hopefully the wind's not being picked up too much. If it is, ironically, I should demonstrate just how windy it actually is up here because it really is. You can see the few strands of hair that I've got left actually blowing about. Uh, it is really windy here. Just gonna have a quick look at my watch and see what altitude we're actually at. Let me just stand by and I'll tell you. So not sure if you'll be able to see that but it's saying basically 7,700 feet roughly speaking. So that's how far we've climbed this afternoon. Literally from sea level uh, the airport here in Tenerife South is about, I think, maybe less than 50 feet above sea level. So that shows how much we've climbed today. And yeah, it's windy. I mean, the scenery is just stunning. It really is. But you can tell by the way I'm being blown about and buffeted that there's no way they would operate the cable cars here today. And if you think, well, that's one of the reasons why you wouldn't come here in December. Well, actually, I've been here before in July, August. I've been here every month of the year over the years and it can close at any time. The Canary Islands are windy based on, you know, you've got to remember where the Canary Islands are located, and it does get windy here. They have very, very windy days, even in the height of summer. So what they generally tend to do with the, if you've got tickets, because you have to buy tickets in advance for the cable car, 
is, and what's happened to me before is, if you've got tickets and for any reason they close it, then they're just valid for the next day, but you do need to reserve, and that's my advice is, if for whatever reason you can't get on the cable car one day because it's closed, you do need to book. You can't just turn up the next day and hope for the best, because this is a very, very popular attraction, ladies and gents. As you saw, if you have a look at my cable car video, which I made when I went to the very peak of Tidy, Tidy, somebody corrected me, I keep saying Tidy, it's Tidy. So do bear that in mind, folks. But once again, fabulous scenery. Despite the wind, nothing can ruin your day here in Tenerife. So what I thought we'd do now is drive a bit lower, and there are some clouds about. I can just see some clouds over the range there. What I can tell you is that we are actually above the cloud level. We're above the layer of cloud at the moment. So what I'm going to try and do is get some video of that for you and talk to you whilst looking down on the clouds, which is something that you very rarely get to do anywhere, really, if you think about it. Another exciting reason to come to the Canary Islands. I should work for the Canary and Tourist Board, shouldn't I? Let's go and have a look at the cloud base. Let's come back to you. And maybe we'll stop on the way and just have a feel of that volcanic rock because we are surrounded by it. There is literally no getting away from volcanic rock when you are here in the Canary Islands, of course. Beautiful place. I keep saying it, but it is. If you've never been, you need to come and have a look at it for yourselves. So let's get back in the car. Let's go and try and find some volcanic rock. We won't need to look too far. And let's go and have a nice drive back down to the hotel and maybe have a glass of red wine. And the other reason that you know that the cable car is closed today is because, even at this time of the year, this car park would be full. You would have to park at this time of the day, basically, down there. So, let's go and find some volcanic rock. So this is all just volcanic rock. So I promised you volcanic rock. There you go. That in itself is worth watching the video for, clearly. You are literally just surrounded in this stuff. I mean, let's face it, everywhere you look in the Canary Islands, you've got volcanic rock. But it is fascinating. It's steeped in history, volcanic history. And if geology is a passing interest, as it is with me, then this is definitely the place to come on holiday. So I think we should go take a trip down and enjoy the last of the sunshine. It's half past three in the afternoon, so it's going to start getting dark in the next hour or so. So I think we should go see some more scenery. We'll stop along the way and I'll show you more of this glorious island. Well, it's definitely coming a lot cooler. Oof, flipping heck. The car is telling me now the temperature has dropped to seven degrees. But remember, we are still at seven and a half thousand feet above sea level, so it's going to be colder, isn't it? And look on the bright side. It's two degrees Celsius where I live in the UK right now. And snowing. Whereas here, it might be cool at seven degrees. But it's glorious sunshine. Albeit that cloud is starting to roll over now. That makes driving back down the hill driving back down the hill, the mountain. That makes driving back down the mountain so much more interesting. Hmm. Right, let's go.
interesting thing here, just as I was driving back, and before I pulled in here, is there are literally, literally hundreds of photographers lining up and down this road at this time of the day in December and January. And this is, uh, that's not a phenomenon, that's not some kind of weird natural thing. It is a paradise for photography here, as well as for motorcyclists and cyclists. So as well as being a paradise for geological scientists and people who are interested in volcanoes and stuff, it's also a magnet for cyclists and motorcyclists, but also for photographers. And there are hundreds, I've seen literally hundreds of them in the last three or four miles who come here at this time of the day in December and January. And I've seen it before in successive years when I've been here to get fabulous pictures of the sunset. So I'm hoping I'll be able to bring some of those to you as we travel back. It's about a one hour drive back to the hotel from where I am here. So whatever shots I can get, whatever video I can get of the sunset, I'll bring that to you because it is beautiful here in Tenerife. It's a fabulous thing to see all across the whole of the Canary Islands, especially in December and January. So I'm gonna jump back in the car now because it is particularly cold. <laughs> But stay with me and uh, we'll hopefully get some of that glorious sunset. So this is possibly the last of the winter sun that we will see this afternoon. Sun, as you can see, just bouncing off the water there, which is rather picturesque. It has been a great afternoon's drive up and down Mount Tady. Across in the distance there, you can see La Gomera. At least I think you'll be able to see it. And that's the island where I'm going in January, which is a really nice island. It's a nice place to visit if you want something a bit quieter. And don't get me wrong, it's still a big island. but it's a fascinating place to visit, and that's because it's a little bit quieter. It's got more windy roads, so not so much different to Tenerife, I guess. But it's always somewhere I enjoy going, particularly in January and February, because it's fairly quiet. So I can highly recommend it, but do stay tuned. And if you want to see the videos from La Gomera, similar to the ones I've made here in Tenerife, then obviously you know what to do. Hit like and subscribe. So I think that's it for today's drive. I've really enjoyed it, and I hope you've enjoyed coming with me as well. I've got lots more videos planned for here on the island of Tenerife and the wider Canary Islands over the next 12 months, and certainly, you know, hopefully, assuming that things don't get too much worse and that things will actually, well, hopefully things will get better over the next few weeks and months, then we'll be covering most of the Canary Islands next year in 2022. I'd wanted to explore a lot more about the Canary Islands obviously in 2021 but the situation being as it was it was just a bit difficult. The travel industry's taken a bit longer to recover than I'd hoped and it's probably quite expected. But 2022 looks promising and hopefully if this current virus doesn't explode too badly then I'll be able to do what I planned in 21 but in 2022 and bring you lots more videos of down here in the Canary Islands which if you've not guessed already is my favourite place on earth and I love being here just being here puts a smile on my face any month of the year it doesn't matter it's year round sunshine it's year round happiness and you know the truth is that every island in the Canaries has something to offer it's something different so if you think Lanzarote, Gran Canaria, Tenerife, the islands that you've probably heard of are the same, they're not. Every island has something different to offer and you'll see that in future videos. But I also want to cover some of the smaller islands. Obviously La Palma is not an option at the moment and I send them my best wishes as I said earlier. But we will be looking at other islands and really excited to be bringing you those. So stay tuned. <laughs>